What's up guys, it's Lake here, we're back with yet another trove video on the channel and today we're gonna be talking about none other than sentient shards. And what if I told you that sentient shards aren't actually time gated? Yes, you heard me right. You heard me right. Yes, the first time I said it. Sentient shards are not going to be time gated and you probably might not exactly know the best way for you guys to farm sentient shards. So in this video, we're going to be running you guys through the methods that you can actually use to actually farm for these sentient shards. The best methods that I would probably recommend to you guys and you know some things that you could probably try it out yourselves as well. So without further ado, let's begin with the video. Right off the bat, let's first understand what sentient shards are and what are their uses. As you can see right here, I have got a total of 137 sentient shards. Of course, as you can see right here, in the description area, it's going to be a rare crafting material used to craft things at the Resistor Workbench in Neon City, Luminopolis. Obtained from completing Rampage Challenge, Beacons, Legendary Tomes, and Greater Neon Caches. So now that we know all about that, let's first talk about the most basic of ways that you could actually obtain these sentient shards. So of course, number one would be via Rampage events, right? You know, during Rampage, you're gonna head on over into the Uber Tree Neon world. You're gonna be finding a couple of those Giga Stormers, and then you're gonna complete one in order to receive the daily reward. So the second way, of course, let's head on over into this blue portal real quick, as I will basically just run you guys through the second or, you know, a couple of best ways for you to obtain these stuff. We're gonna head on over onto this workbench, all right? You might be wondering, so, um, Latecom, um, what is this fixture and how do you actually get this in a club? Well, let's head on over under the fixtures section in Silphid. As you can see right here, we have got none other than the Beacon of Heroes. Now, what does this Beacon of Heroes actually do? It basically just allows you to place down this fixture. It's a pretty cool thing. It's got that little, you know, sparkly looking projection in the ceiling. And we have got this overclocked resistor workbench. So, as you can see... You're probably going to need a lot of sentient shard for the event guardian and you might be like, okay, please, I need to learn about the best way to farm for these sentient shards. What is the method without any, you know, time get it ways, all right? So let me just tell you, or, you know, if you probably didn't know, right, in this beacons area, um, you are probably wondering what these actually do. Okay, you know, of course, it's going to spawn these little, um, I'd like to call them Enslaved Rampage, right? So basically, it's going to be one of them where you could, you know, kind of just grab them and just throw it into your club worlds and stuff like that. And basically, they will spawn. And you also might be wondering, which one is actually the cheapest to craft? Well, at this point in time, Cinnabar, let's just take a look at Cinnabar right now real quick. So Cinnabar is going to be at about 29 flux each and Robotic is going to be at about 65. So I'd probably prefer if you guys were to go for the more expensive Cinnabar part since Robotic Salvage is going to be way more expensive. So I'm just going to craft one right off the bat. As you can see right here, this beacon will be spawned inside my inventory right here. And it says it will only be working in Club Worlds. It, it asks us to use this to call forth a, ten, a Titanic Tentacular. So, you know what? If you've got a rather cool club and your club has got this little fixture, you can craft these items there because they will be giving you a 10% off. Yes, a 10% off on this little fixture right here. In which is going to be pretty cool because it's definitely going to help you out a ton. All right, so let's head over into this little red portal right here. As you can see, we have this weird looking area. You might also be wondering, now what is the use of this little area right here? Well, if let's say I were to take a pinata, let's just say I'll just grab one juicy pinata right here. I'm just going to place one of these in my inventory. I'm just going to take out this tentacular beacon and just throw yeet. We just hit it over there and boom, they just fall right down and they die. So if you've got a club that has a void or a hole like this, then feel free to head over into this one of your club worlds. And you're going to grab that beacon, throw it down, boom, and you're going to be able to receive one sentient shot, as you can see down below right here, as you throw, um, you know, each of these beacons. So I would probably suggest that you guys throw like six of these beacons, you know, with your friends, with your clubmates, with, you know, all of the people that you can get into this world. And you're all going to complete these rampages by just you 
crafting these items and just yeeting them down into this little void stuff area. And then you will actually be able to obtain these sentient shards. Alrighty, so now let's talk about the next best method that you could probably use to actually get these little sentient shards, alright? So heading on over onto the material section, as you can see, you can actually craft these sentient shards. What are they going to actually cost you? It's going to take 10 Empyrean Dragon Egg Fragments and or 10 Resistor Dragon Egg Fragments. Now, I wouldn't really recommend you guys to actually craft these, um, you know, using these Resistor and the Empyrean Fragments because first you've got to complete the Hosh Azora and the Rom 10. Just basically get a hundred of each fragment before you've been contemplating on making these because of course dragons will be a precedence when it comes to getting mastery and power rank and you know some attack speed some damages and stuff like that which will definitely help you out along the way so I would recommend you guys to only consider on you know crafting these sentient shots via this methods by you know after you've completed these two dragons or you know if you've got you know enough or a hundred of these resistor fragments, then you can head on over into the material section and just craft the resistor dragonic fragments into a sentient shot if you've got like a hundred of the, you know, resistor fragments. Oh yeah, and um, one more thing that um, I forgot to talk about in this video was that you can also obtain the sentient shards by crafting the Empyrean Sentience Tome right here, in which is going to grant you a total of five sentient shards once it's fully charged. But sadly, this is going to be a time-gated method. So yeah, it's probably the reason why I didn't really talk too much about it. It's because it's time-gated and you can only be obtaining five of these sentient shards per week. But I mean, hey, it's still better than nothing, right? And of course, you can feel free to craft these, feel free to grab the items and stuff like that. So yeah, it's definitely one of the good ways for you to actually obtain five sentient shards per week just by, you know, filling up a tome and stuff like that. So it's going to be relatively cool. And now let me just talk about the next best ways that you could actually farm for these materials to obtain these beacons. So it's going to take a, a couple of plasmium, a couple of robotic salvage. It's going to take some cinnabar, as I have mentioned earlier. It will kind of require more, you know, in the sense that it's going to be cheaper when you craft it in this uh, little tier three workbench or in this tier three, you know, adventure fixture right here, the Beacon of Heroes, in which will really, really help you guys out because every 10 beacons that you craft, you're going to be saving enough materials for an additional beacon. So instead of crafting 10, you'll be able to craft 11 with the same price if you have got this fixture right here. So that's gonna be the first step to keeping prices, you know, pretty cheap and affordable. At least 10% off is definitely not that bad of a deal. Now, next thing that we have got here is the Cinnabars. And you know, you might be wondering, so what's the best way for you to actually obtain these Cinnabars? Now, the thing that I would recommend you guys right here is to use this little Cinnabar Tome in which is, yep, right here cinnabar sensibility in which will produce 40 cinnabars when fully charged so basically you know you're going to be completing this cinnabar tome as you farm dungeons and stuff like that or let's say you play bomber real or you go into geode caves or delves or whatever and you'll be able to charge up this tome so you might also be wondering so which one's actually better if you were to use the cybernetics catalog or if you were to use the cinnabar tome so at this point in time cinnabar is going to be about one to two so basically Basically, one of these robotic salvages will be equivalent to two of these cinnabars. A little bit higher, a little bit lower, but whatever, you get my point. So, as you can see right here, you only you are only going to be obtaining 15 of these robotic parts, which, you know, it's not going to be that good. So I would say that this is going to be the best tome. I mean, you see it in all of my videos. I am always going to be using those tomes. But of course, first, I'm going to be completing the other of my tomes. Alrighty, so if you were wondering where you could actually obtain this little Cinnabar Sensibility Tome, let's just head on over into the Rune Crafting Bench right here, as you will be able to take a look down below in the Runic Master section. It will require a couple of Fury Feathers, some Plumodial Flames, and some Cinnabar. So you can basically just farm these Fury Feathers inside the Uber 6 world, in which is pretty much pretty easy. Just kill a couple of mobs there, and the Feathers will drop as they come, in which you will only be requiring a total or five of these and if you don't actually have the you know capability of crafting this little cinnabar sensibility you could always just keep on using the cybernetics catalog in which you could probably even buy in the market cyber yeah it's gonna be about fifty thousand flux not really too expensive for a newer player at least that's probably about 10 20 30 minutes of farming at the most so yeah 
This is definitely going to be a totem that you could possibly be using in, as an alternative to the Cinnabar Tome. And I mean, it's just between the two, right? It's not really going to be that crazy of a difference. But with the Cinnabar Tome, I guess you'll be earning about 20% more flux or, you know, in value as compared to the Cybernetics Catalog. So it's best if you were to just get this right off the bat. So with that out of the way though, let's now talk about how you can obtain Plasmium and Robotic Salvage quickly and as efficiently as possible in order to afford for these beacons right here. So as I've been saying in many, many and many of my videos, for newer players out there like you guys who are just starting out 10,000 power rank, 20,000 power rank, and if you're interested in learning how to make Flux as a whole, then I would kind of recommend you guys to head on over into Uber 3 and of course, just complete Neon City Recipe Dungeons. I speak of this a lot. I talk about this in literally every single beginner Flux farming guide that I make, but it is definitely going to be one of the best Flux making methods for you guys out there who are newer players. And of course, I forgot to switch on over onto my Neon Ninja, in which is definitely going to be something that you would need and if you've got the Elysian Bandolier, you should be using the Elysian Bandolier if you're strong enough to solo this world without requiring any flask. So it's going to be relatively simple if you don't really know how this method of farming actually works. First off, you've got to head on over into the Neon City area. Now you can actually check by clicking on the escape button. It's going to say Luminopolis. It's not going to be the place where you want to be at. So you're going to have to head on over onto the darker area right there. As you can see on my map, if you can't actually see it properly, it's going to be a little bit of a darker shade of gray or, you know, dark black, whatever you want to call it. But anyways, we're going to head on over. Ooh. I heard a stellar. Yeah, getting sidetracked by the juicy looking stellars, but it's always gonna be something necessary to collect. Anyways, with that being said, we are now in the Neon City area. As you can see by clicking on escape, we're gonna see that we're gonna be in the Neon City area. So let's head on over into this recipe looking place where you can actually find them in this, you know, scroll dungeon. So we're gonna head on over into this area and let's kill the boss open up this box real quick and there we go neon city scrap case and a neon recipe of course i've already got the neon recipe so it doesn't really matter that much but as we open these we're gonna be receiving some robotic salvage we're gonna sometimes receive some plasmium and you get my point so after further calculation i have deduced that the value of these boxes at the bare minimum would be at about 1.5k flux so yeah Really, really good method. Just farm your Neon City scrap cases inside these worlds and don't try to sell your scrap cases on its own because I would recommend you guys to just open them and, you know, save them up for beacons. And this is going to be the only way that's going to make these um, sentient shards not time gated. It's just for you to just get these scrap cases, open them, just collect your plasma mat at the same time, fill up your cinnabar tome, and slowly but surely you will be able to obtain enough you know, materials to craft those beacons. And you're gonna take about 60 beacons to actually get 60 of those shards, probably less, you know, considering the fact that you're gonna be getting one per day if you complete these quests at the same time. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend you guys to throw these beacons on just randomly. I would recommend you guys just throw them during rampage events because you, you, know, you can, you can basically just throw them with your friends. They are definitely gonna, you know, say thank you very much because it's gonna be rather expensive or you and your friends could probably save up for a couple of these together and, you know, just get them over with together because, you know, two is better than one. But anyways, it's probably going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you guys learned a thing or two, you know, found a new method, at least to farm for these sentient shots, to craft your Ben Guardian or to craft your costumes or basically anything that requires sentient shots because the resistor workbench is going to be a pain. But as I said earlier, you should be finding a club that actually has got a tier three, you know, beacon of heroes in which is going to be something that is going to be really important if you want to cut down the cost of these beacon crafting and if you don't have a beacon of heroes just head on over into the luminopolis area and just look for those little um monolith looking thing the adventure outpost looking area and that will actually help you you know find a place for you to craft these beacons craft these costumes and you know the rest of the stuff that you find in the usual resistor stuff i'm sure you probably already know all about that right now but i guess that's probably going to be all for this video thank you guys so much for watching and i hope to see you guys in the next couple of videos and as usual peace out